Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Linux Lads 2020. Um, that makes it sound like some sort of uh, cool sci-fi show from the 60s, which is why 2020 is going to be a good year. <laughs> dun, 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 I, dun, dun, I, am, I am, of dun, course, dun, Shane. Dun, dun, dun. I'm Connor. <laughs> and I'm Mike. That's Connor with a nice rousing tune for us. Um, <laughs> so, yes, you are listening to the Linux Lads. It's the only Linux podcast that puts the toilet roll the right way around. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a fact. How um, long were you sitting on that one? <laughs> you. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> this this year we're going to begin the madness anew. Um, we're going to begin begin the madness anew with an outward eye. I think this year because it's you know it's January. A lot of people get sad during January, but personally, I don't know. I I like January because everything's kind of starting up again you know we're starting from scratch it feels like a blank page um so it's kind of you know that's the optimist in me so leading on from that we're talking about what we predict and what we see for linux in 2020 so uh this is always interesting because you know the troll one is always the year of the linux desktop isn't it <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's more of a meme at this stage than an actual thing that people think is going to happen. What do you mean? Like it hasn't happened yet or I don't know. It's a, it's a stupid meme really. I don't really care uh, what people use. So uh, like, I mean, I do, but I don't. So as, as listeners would know, I actually don't think everybody should be using computers anyway because they are quite a specific and complicated tool and uh, like as i see it there are people who would always want to use a very specific uh specific tool like i had a uh i was interviewing a person for a position today and uh, they got asked would you rather work on a, a windows machine a Lin or a linux machine and uh, he answered basically a user would always obviously choose Windows because it's more user friendly because nobody wants to type in commands. I think that's quite normal an opinion between people among people that uh, you know computers are difficult and Linux doubly so and maybe you know it as long as there's enough users of Linux uh, to keep making it better and better then it's fine. Yeah, I mean, and it doesn't have to break through on the desktop. It doesn't have to break through on mobile for me. I mean it's kind of fine the way it is it's chugging along nicely so we're always getting some new goodies there's always something exciting happening in the community there's always devi more devices coming along coming along with linux on them so you know there's always that shit in the pipeline so it's it, uh, personally i'm looking forward to 2020 i think there's going to be a few cool things i don't think there's going to be anything you know groundbreaking uh, i don't really think there ever is i mean but no, you can have the likes of the Raspberry Pi a few years ago. That was quite a, a big one for Linux because it just made it so accessible and, and affordable to run a Linux machine. Um, like, you know, a standard almost like Raspberry Pi and Linux were bosom buddies. Um, so, you know, you have things like that. You have projects that sort of ride the wave or Linux rides its wave. I don't know. Um Mike, <laughs> you have written here, Mike has no predictions, but he has plenty of wishes. Uh, what what are some of those wishes? Well, I'm, I'm incompetent in terms of predictions. Like if you, if, if, uh, yeah, so I can't, I can't basically tell you if uh, Canonical is going to get IPO'd or uh, if, uh, I don't know, ZFS is going to be available in every single disk row to get a revalent. But I know what I'd like to see in the, in the, in the year 2020. I would like to see uh, basically Firefox overtaking, overtaking uh, Chrome in performance. I'd like to see uh, LibreOffice kicking, kicking the ass of Excel. I would like to see the Linux Steam Gaze uh, leaving like uh, Windows Steam Gaze in the dust. And I do realize that, uh, contradictorily to what I said before, all of these things need 
a good solid user base for them to happen so uh, you know I said before that I don't really care if people use Linux as long as there is enough of them but there should be hopefully enough of people caring about Linux to make this all happen because uh, what we have is fantastic and uh, it can be still so much better so I just want uh, if I was to you know there's always people when they make predictions they they are asked to make them so that they are measurable so if i were make to if i were make to make if i were to make measurable wishes it would be uh it's so that continuously uh firefox is eating less ram and uh, rendering websites faster than chrome i would like to see uh libreoffice being able to uh faster process uh, more gigabytes uh, of information than Excel and uh, somehow that's not measurable but being a bit more user-friendly at least to me and uh, I'd like to see Steam games having a higher frame rate even though personally I don't really game at that level but I would like to see us outperforming uh, Microsoft uh, Windows and the Mac you know I would like to see what I would like to see as well is uh, Apple fan fanboy of the of the highest caliber being being given an old uh, a laptop with uh, KDE plasma on it, and uh, him immediately after that giving back his Apple fanboy card and uh, switching to Linux because that's how good it is. So yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> a, a guy can wish. Can a guy can wish? So when it comes to Archer KDE, you're just ever the optimist. Well. Hey, well, I want to put. I've been an open user for a while, and I'm still an optimist. Even, even, uh, you know. And KD is, and I've tried to be honest. I've tried GNOME. Uh, I, I mean, I had some issues with running a game, so I installed Pop OS. And KDE, in terms of usability for me, is no, is not as good as GNOME. I just keep use, using KDE because I do. But uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that. KD on its way to overtake overtaking Mac OS will also overtake GNOME. Some people say that the GNOME interface is actually better than the Mac OS one. And I realize that I'm talking from a point of view of a person who has got who has liked this paradigm of that all of these things represent. But uh, yeah. Somebody say something because I've been rumbling on a uh, for a long time. Yeah, Connor. You're like not saying much over there. Uh, I think my eyes glazed over a bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was I was looking down through the that article that um, Mike has put in the show notes there, which is the inspiration, which is an OMG article. Oh, that was and, Shane. That wasn't me. You cannot pin that one on me, mate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, one of you fuckers put it in. I don't know who. <laughs> you, you didn't put your name against it, so I don't know. Um... Um, some of them are are, are quite good. Uh, um, the ones that stick out to me is um, lightweight heavyweights. So in that they highlight, um, uh, well, certainly in the in the screenshot they they highlight uh, Zorn OS Lite, which is running XFCE. And the reason why that kind of sticks out to me is because um, I'm currently running Manjaro and it's this this default desktop environment is XFCE. And I think I actually mentioned that a, a couple of episodes ago, and even though we took a break, and I'm still on it. I mean, it, it's it's the case of it hasn't gone away. It's still it's still solid. It's still very responsive. So um, there um, definitely there could be something in 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 2020 that the the quote unquote more lightweight um desktop environments could be could get more into the limelight um i'm finding xfce could to be quite solid particularly since the its most recent uh, 4.14 release i actually yeah i actually recently came into the possession of a lenovo thinkpad for quite cheap and uh i got one for me and the girlfriend and uh from uh, from from a lad in the the linux group actually so shout out to him um linux community um dublin linux community and <laughs> and uh getting your plugs uh, keys du on. Du dublin linux .org for <laughs> um so yeah well, yeah cheap laptop anyway and uh do you know you made it sound like uh, dublin linux .org sold cheap laptops right uh <laughs> yeah kind of 
forget about that's not what i meant um <laughs> the uh but yeah i was messing around with like music and stuff when i bought like a little midi keyboard and i was using lmms uh linux multimedia software i, I actually can't remember but um the yeah it's cool it's like it's like just an electronic music thingy like where you put samples in a loops and you create synth sounds and then you play them on your little keyboard and it's really fun like it's it's i'm not going to become a musician or anything i just think it's a good crack but like um i was uh, putting ubuntu studio on this laptop uh the lenovo thinkpad and i just just to test it out because i knew it was an xfc distro as well on top of all the cool like you know creative little programs it comes with um you know it's i love that kind of curated distro you know but it was it was it wasn't about xfce but it was more about the stuff that comes with it like i love it when they collect a certain group of types of apps together and you know it's like a little treasure trove i love that shit and um but yeah xfce impressed me like really good um it uh, i i don't know like I, I don't have anything profound to say about it because it just kind of stays out of your way it's very simple it just does the job and it, it, you know it doesn't slow down it doesn't get in your way at all i mean you know it's a bit fugly in parts but you know whatever that's that's fine you can kind of get used to it it's 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 very, it's, it, it's fugly but it's unobtrusive so <laughs> Um, yeah, there's there certain distros. Um, I'm I'm sure um, Zubuntu and Ubuntu Studio and the Manjaro, which I'm running at the moment, they do a good job of 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 theming the default um, uh, XFC experience. And so, um, the way I describe uh, XFC is, yeah, it's it's simple, it's functional, and it gets out your way, but it's super snappy, it's super responsive, especially. Um, I'm not saying that uh, on that any way that anything uh, Ubuntu based is not responsive and, and others. Um, Zubuntu I've used it uh, quite a few times. Certainly very snappy and responsive, but for some reason anything that's based off Arch just seems to be that much more responsive. Uh, I don't know if it's any. I, I'm not the most technical person, as I'm sure. Um, anyone who's listening to this will will or anyone who's met me and anyone who's, who's listening to this will will be able to um tell me um i'm not the most technical person in the world but so i've no idea what's going on in the background that is making it this more response responsive or it could be complete another placebo effect it might not, not actually be measurably more responsive at all but for me um anything that's based off arch just seems more responsive to me yeah i do get that um uh, it's just the 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 problem with with arch based distros for me always came when it was update time um yeah because the because of the bleeding edge release model you'd sometimes get packages that kind of fuck things up a little bit and you'd kind of wouldn't know how to do it and i wasn't kind of like i could have researched all the commands to like roll back updates and stuff like that but I just couldn't be arsed. Like I um, just couldn't. Yeah, it's it's definitely um, it's definitely not for the for the brand new um, Linux user. For example, even though I'm running Manjaro, which is pe- some people will nearly describe as arch with with trending wheels or like kitty gloves or whatever, um, but it's the balance that I like. But even then, um, uh, there was a pop up that came up that said. Oh, you were on the five dot three kernel. There's now the five dot four kernel. Do you want to upgrade? I'm like, yeah, sure. It's the the latest and greatest stuff. I'll install that. And I had been using U Launcher as my um, kind of program launcher. And of course, the the version of U Launcher that I had installed wasn't compatible with the five dot four um kernel. So that means that U Launcher just just uh wasn't working at all. Like failed to launch completely. Um, so I had to. Re- I'm not saying it's, it was a very much a hardship at all, but I had to res- resort back to using the, the whisker menu that comes with XFCE and using the, the typing searching in there. And then uh, one time when I saw updates, I saw there was an update to U Launcher and then did the update and then the new version went um, brought back in functionality with the with the 504. So those kind of things where there's it's so bleeding edge that something that they update and there'll be a package that you use, such as a U Launcher, 
is not compatible with that update because it just hasn't updated um those kind of things can be slightly annoying but as long as you know that that is those things can happen then um arch or manjaro is 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 um certainly ha- has a lot of positives um that pro- depends on your appetite for yeah. for carcery pretty much yeah and the that's the the argument against or the argument for the snapshot distro such as ubuntu where they create that shit for you in other words the, they know that okay this package is going to work with this kernel version and we're not going to update either one of them unless we know they're compatible with each other you said something there referring to other people that if I had another wish, it would be so that these things go away. Like, who calls Manjaro Arch with training wheels? That is so annoying. Like, you... yeah, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't agree with that point of view at all. I'm, I was just trying. I mean, yeah, there are there are those elitist people out there. It's denigrating two things. It's denigrating the users and it's denigrating a distro that is doing a damn really good job. Like, I don't know, this kind of uh, snarky comments should just uh, not happen anymore because, you know, there's the, uh, it's it's uh, not Arch with training wheels. It's a full, I don't know, I want to say full body, but it's not the correct expression. It's a proper Linux distribution like any other that has got that can be as complex as you make it and uh, like the people who, uh, who who the majority of people who don't want to spend the time for the for the first time or the, for the tenth time uh, to install arch uh, from scratch and still want to avail themselves of the of the arch repos and uh, of the AUR and of the great work of, that Manjaro do when they actually make Arch really like usable without too much effort, then like that's perfectly not even fine. That's just is. That's that's the way, that's that's the way it should be. I don't know what people have. Like I don't know. Well, CES is going at the moment on at the moment. Speaking of of tech, so CES is is usually um, where electronic manufacturers and gadget manufacturers kind of show off their wares and they may be at the prototype stage they mightn't be ready for production and it could be this will be released in six months time this will be released in 12 months time or this will this is just a freaking almost like a concept car kind of thing of this is the shit we can do but uh it this is still three or four years away um but uh, Dell have actually come out with I think it was Dell um, if it's not Dell then um, forgive me but I think uh, they came out um, with some very nifty uh, ideas in relation to um, screens and um, computers um, So they came out with something where it's, it's two screens and you can either op- operate the two screens almost like touch screens um, uh, and it's linked in the middle with a hinge or it can open up like a laptop and the, the second screen will display um, uh, a trackpad for like mouse and stuff like that and they have um, uh, a bluetooth magnetic physical keyboard that would just uh, you could just put it on top of it and once it detects that it's on top on top then like it will react to it like the operating system will just react to it and immediately I was thinking that would be cool and uh, but I guarantee freaking Linux would not have the drivers ready that shit but uh, um, and another one was effectively it looked for want of a better word uh, I'll try to think of um, multiple examples so I'm not picking on any particular v- or, or, or choosing any particular vendor but it looked like an iPad or a Surface um, tablet that you're used to now but effectively just folded in half so it looked like a, a book they could open up and the book was just all screen on the inside so it would open up and there's your tablet that that whole that whole foldable screen thing is interesting because that's not where i saw computers going at all like i never really figured that that that's how that i, I don't know like you've asked me five years ago what's going to be the big thing in 2020 in terms of personal computers 
I would have said it's just going to be all phones. Like, like other computers are just going to diminish completely and everyone's just going to have transparent phones um, and transparent TVs and bendable TVs and bendable screens around their wrist and shit. Like, I was like, that's definitely going to happen very soon. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, I guess it's getting there. They're hinging them, which is, uh, you know, that's halfway to fully foldable or fully like flexible screens like they have they already have the technology it's just experimental where it's 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 an, a fucking lcd screen and it's like a piece of acetate like a uh, page it's it's insane like um so that stuff i'm really looking forward to but yeah the, these hinged laptops are like with the two screens and i've seen some of those phones as well as uh, i believe samsung had one where those foldable phones where it's like a little it's like a wallet with screens on either side and you can fold it out or fold it back on itself i was like i don't want that that's shite like like would you would you not press the screen all the time by accident like it'd get like uh, that that's just asking for trouble with that hinge in the middle like that if especially like the first generation units like that's going to wear out very quickly and break within a year i'd say uh, well at the at the point of this recording so what um uh Samsung and I believe Huawei and possibly Xiaomi have out of av- available uh for purchase at extortionate prices but like of course it's it's early early uh, testing and early uh, early early adapters uh or early adopters sorry not adapters um to the technology um, so these are like several thousand euro or whatever, but like it, or fifteen hundred or something like that. But it's 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 uh, because you're an early adopter of 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 new technology, and they have a uh, a vertical fold, so the two screens um meet each other each meet each other um vertically, um but also Motorola came out with their their new take on the old razor where it's a horizontal fold so the two f- phones or the f- two screens literally flip on top of each other and then sandwich in just like the old f- um flip uh motorola oh, razor really, yeah. and i uh i'm sure samsung um were already i mean they've already shown that they have the the vertical fold where it look it looks like a book um but they've they've also shown or they've teased a something very similar to what um Motorola are doing where it has the horizontal fold where it kind of flips down like a flip phone. But uh, I'd imagine that it was already in the works because these things take years. I mean, there's no way that they saw the Motorola thing and went, wait a minute, we should do that also. So I'd imagine that that Samsung were, were already working on it when um Motorola announced it. I, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we're all probably more excited about, you know, getting Linux on a shit phone <laughs> than than a really cool sci-fi bendy phone that docks with everything. And uh, like, no, I, I don't care anymore. I don't care. I, I don't know. I'm a... I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a gadget nerd, so you you can you can sway me with with flash as well, but um, but obviously I would not be able to afford it. I'm I'm becoming an old man. I really am. I'm starting to not care about mainstream technology, um, and I'm starting to criticize it. I actually do care about mainstream technology because uh, first it comes out it's really shit, really overpriced and extremely proprietary, but eventually it gets to the point where we have decent. Or hopefully it gets to the point where we have decent uh, open alternatives. So you know, imagine if you if you bought a computer in the nineties with Windows on it, Windows ninety five, and it was really pricey, really really not very powerful, and uh, it was all locked in by Microsoft. Uh, you know, but twenty years later, you can you have a really decent experience with uh, or great experience with. Linux on that on a on a computer. Uh, I have high hopes for things like Minecraft. That uh, you know the uh, the nascent nascent personal assistant uh, personal assistant market will produce 
will become big enough for people to be interested in hope open uh, technologies for for personal assistance there's a budging uh, community around uh, like home automation in open in open uh, like that that is open standards because especially since uh, like a lot of the actual commercial gear in that sphere works with one another using open standards even apple and that's something has open source part of their part of their uh, home pod specs or whatever they call it, the home assistant specs and uh, like so i i am interested in technology like uh, talking about ces uh the Samsung was showcasing some kind of a robot that's gonna follow you around. It looks like a tennis ball with a camera on it, and uh, BB-8. Yeah, but smaller <sighs> and yellow. And uh, nice. like, if you have that, and if you have like a stand-up mirror that's actually a screen, it can it can take photos from behind you when you do yoga. It's not creepy at all. Like the, they have a whole video that we can. And I will put in the show notes where it basically. Uh, there's a woman living with a dog in an apartment and it kind of swallows her around and takes photos of her and it's meant to come across as like really cool but I'm thinking Jesus Christ like would I really want that but on the other hand if there was a piece of technology that uh, I could just you know like a basically a servant more like an R2D2 that you can just uh, call to do call thing, cool things like you know uh, fix the light bulb or open the window for me or do do whatever you know fetch me fetch me a can of cider that kind of thing um, i would be all for it you know and uh, so i i uh, plus obviously the fact that uh, my my job consists uh, mostly of uh, uh, working well like researching the the, the mobile phone market so uh I I am I have a big interest in it and I have hopes I just hope we get across this horrible lull where everything is just like it was last year just incremental updates to uh to things they don't know what to do so they smack nine cameras on on the back of a phone because for some reason that's meant to be, be that's meant to be better than four and uh, I hope we get across it and people start or companies will start innovating I mean they have to if they want to keep us spending obviously but uh yeah so so i have i am actually optimistic i said something that i like that sounded what i said earlier that sounded uh really pessimistic that nothing's gonna happen in 2020 and it's possible that nothing extremely good or extremely exciting is gonna happen but the time is getting ripe ripe for it to to for something to come across the the market is uh ready for disruption again i think yeah yeah i think we're overdue a paradigm shift of some description um and you know the rising tide lifts all ships so the more technology in, and software in general gets better you know you're going to get a lot more independent houses like uh like pine 64 and uh the room <laughs> talking and, of uh, which <laughs> <laughs> oh yes ideal segue Deals a burning burning topic they contacted me over christmas and they were like we didn't talk about that <laughs> uh okay so well i can start uh basically what it is this uh, uh this is or it's meant to be when it's actually a finished product uh librem 5 the phone that focuses on security by design and privacy protection by default they say this because a it's not running android and ios which is good but it's running their custom operating system which is a big undertaking and also it has got kill switches and uh, which are which are help meant to help the users to uh not uh you know to to not transmit their private information when they don't don't they when they don't want to so far almost so good except for the in-house made operating system which i think that must have taken a lot of resources away from them and there are there are actually uh, projects they could have contributed but uh, yeah basically it's a linux phone so uh, which uh, somehow manages to be uh, i don't know how how late they are at this point they crown founded it was it uh, i think uh, any, I, uh, they're they're about uh, 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 yeah i do not know the exact time scale so i'm guesstimating off the top of my head but i think they're about two years late 
Well, put it this way. I remember us talking about this at OCCAM 2018, right? But we were talking about them saying that they will release... Yeah, okay, so I remember that. So in, in 2018, they were crowdfunding it, and they were saying that they will release a phone and ship it in 2019, which they say they did, I think. I wouldn't say so, because the thing that they are shipping, it's uh, not ready, it's not finished, it doesn't make phone calls, or maybe it does now, but it didn't. Uh, I don't know. It uh, It's uh, not put together as they... It, like it, It's not the finished production ready or you know retail ready or whatever they call it uh product so they've been late that's one point uh they've done it before they've crowdfunded their computers they shipped them late and when they shipped them they weren't as in the same shape well when they they weren't in the same shape they promised the computers would be when they uh, i start again they've done this before they crowdfunded computers, they shipped them late, and when they shipped them, they weren't uh, to the same specs and in the same shape as they promised. So, uh, that's another problem. Third problem with it, it cost $749 at the moment, it was a bit cheaper, it's getting more expensive. And that combined with the shitty specs and the shitty looks, is just uh, that's bad so they say uh you know they it's a three gigabytes of uh, memory 32 gigabytes of storage uh 1.5 gigahertz uh, uh chipset quad core with uh, uh that's i think the chipset is two three years old by now and uh, yeah i get it android uh, sorry linux doesn't need as much resources as android because it's not gonna run the whole virtual machine on it but you are selling for the price of a new upper middle range phone you are selling a uh, like two three year old device like the thing is 1.5 millimeter 1.5 centimeters thick I tried to look at GSM Marina for a phone in the whole database of GSM Marina. I tried to find a phone that thick and I, uh, with the same specs, so 32 gigabytes mem uh, storage, 30 gigabytes of memory, and that thickness, and there was none. You know, so uh, I'm getting a bit heated. Maybe somebody can take over. Um, so I'll, very briefly, what I've written down. Um, uh, and then I'll go into more detail later, uh, or I'll go back and go into more detail. Is I've written down a couple of points uh, in pros, new of uh, one neutral point, and then cons. Uh, and just I wrote this down even before, before we were recording, so some of them actually echo some of uh, Mike's points. But um, the fact that they echo Mike's points shows that they're there's these are the fundamentals of it, and this is what is annoying about this whole project. Um, so fundamentally it's a good idea I agree with the open source phone idea I mean of course uh, it, it, the, the the fundamental premise of the of the device is that it's an open phone um, certainly not, no objections there um, uh, kill switches for privacy again um, it's if that is what your target audience is and um, we currently exist in, in that era or area so um certainly um i can certainly see where where kill switches for privacy would be a good idea um my neutral point after much deliberation and um like as i said this thing has been going on for over a year um so we've had plenty of time to think about this and plenty of time to think about their approach my neutral point some might argue that this was a con but i decided to put in an in as a neutral point i'm not confident that they're going to be sustainable um unfortunately uh and it really really was difficult for me to write that down because you want to be optimistic you want them to be successful because you want the idea of an open source phone to be successful it's just they're they're implementation of it and the way they've 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 interacted with the community has seriously seriously um pissed me off um to be to be frank and i've was in the past i've been willing to give them a lot of 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 rope 
like a lot of slack to say, oh, they're they're new, they're wor- still working this out. Yeah, all good win- will has gone out the window at this stage, unfortunately. Um, six months ago, I probably would have still given them goodwill and just give them the benefit of the doubt, but it's gone past that at this at this stage. Uh, the cons, um, uh, they increased it a hundred dollars to seven hundred and fifty. So it was, I think the the price that they said to the backers was five nine nine, and that was their special backer price, or it could possibly have been slightly cheaper, could have been five fifty, and then they're saying, oh, but then this is for the backers, and this is limited amount, which is understandable as crowdfunding, and the, that's the way the crowdfunding happens, and then they're saying when it goes out for general sale on our web page, it's going to be more expensive. That more expensive was about six hundred and fifty. Now they're up to seven hundred and fifty or seven four nine as as Mike says. Uh uh addressing that price, uh the only way I could see them them going for the price increase would be that um that the they're fast they're either f- running out of money and they have to raise revenue quite uh, quite quickly and that's the reason why they're raising the price or they had unforeseen um increasing costs on their in their production line and they want to recoup some of their costs um the correct approach to do it in that instance would be let's say i'm 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 just throwing a figure out there let's say they're making a hundred dollars profit on each phone and that's uh, on that um on that 650 in other words the 550 was them breaking even to the to for the crowdfunding people um a honorable company would probably eat into that hundred dollars profit um rather than increasing the price as much as possible to me it sounds like they they want to keep their their uh their profit margin at uh, I know it sounds very cynical, but to me, it did, did sound like they they want to keep their profit margin. Um, could be it could be the case of their costs increased by a hundred dollars, and they're back to break even point again. And in which case, uh, which case they want to increase it so that they have some sort of margin in in relation to it. Um, but be a uh, a small bit of transparency would go a long way in that regard um if they come out and say listen our our costs are, are way more than we thought it was going to be we're going to have to increase the uh, the price uh i would say unless they're in real dire straits i would say uh, f- an, an increase w- of 50 dollars per per phone would go a long way when you go out when you do it on scale an increase of 50 dollars on um per individual unit is a large increase an increase of a hundred dollars is a huge increase um uh and one of my other points was their general pr and communications which i kind of um have alluded to already and um mike please take over because (laughs) i'm getting a bit passionate here well uh you see, the problem is exactly as you said. It's uh, they are swearing by their uh, by their open source principles and whatnot, but they are not an open company. They don't. They make this. Uh, you know, they they send. They say, well, we shipped it. We f- shipped the first batch, and then it transpires that they shipped it only to uh, the employees or whatever it was. They their estimates of when they are going to shift are really rubbish. And okay, yeah, you can make bad estimates you can make genuine mistakes but what annoys me no end about them it is the probably even more than just the price is that they are on such a bloody high horse it's so annoying to to to, to even watch their website it just says we invest in public interest no you don't you don't in that's not public interest it's 750 dollars public interest is you giving this away at cost price like i know you they are uh or, or they very slim margins like 10 yeah, or, 10 they, or 20 dollars per phone or something they, they are talking themselves up as uh, whatever they are they are not a uh, for-profit they are some kind of a uh, public uh, public benefit company or some some and I, I understand that that's a very good idea that i don't i'm i'm don't like capitalism i don't i think be you know these every company should be for public benefit but like 
if you are if you are selling overpriced crappy goods, deliver them, deliver, deliver, deliver them late. You should not pretend you're Jesus, you know, or whatever deity you believe in. This is this is not this is not on. It's like every it's very hipster. Their design is very slick, except for the phones because they look like shit. The, everything well, is that's an ent- entirely subjective. I mean, uh, and they they. they uh, yeah, and the 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 one I am just in relation to the the hardware. I'm willing to give them. Like, so, so most of my objections are in relation to the price and how they interact with the community. I'm willing to give them a, quite a bit of slack when it comes to the hardware because a lot of the hardware, like such as the thickness of the phone, is down to their design decisions. Um, I believe they uh, it's because they they wanted the back the back to be removable as in fully removable as in you you get a screwdriver and you're, uh, like there's a there's a a video where the where uh the CEO literally unscrews the entire thing off the back. Uh, I think that's that's by design. They want a removable battery. I believe they have a a full laptop size Wi-Fi um chip or wi-fi component into it which probably leads to the thickness so that is uh, by design either by either uh true due to design design due to circumstances circumstance or design due to that was their design for the very get-go so that is by design so i'm willing to give them a, quite a bit of slack in relation to the physical design of the phone but I have a counterpoint for this. Okay, so do you you have uh, what is it? One point five centimeter uh, thick, and subjectively to me, ugly looking uh, Librem five for seven hundred and fifty dollars, right? So you are saying uh, that's because they had to. Now there is this Fairphone free, which is uh, it's also very repairable. You can take the thing apart. It's uh, modular, uh, and also it's sourced as much as you can, obviously, as a phone is sourced ethically. Fairphone free costs 450 euros, right? So let's say even if it was $500, that's still quite a lot less than your Libre M5. Uh, if you, they are both uh, going in on eth- about So both of these companies, it's quite nice how they are comparable. Of course, Fairphone uses Android, Whereas, uh, whereas uh, Librem uses Linux or some kind of their version of Linux, but Fairphone uh, shows you at least on the on the on the on the uh, on their website on at least on the I didn't obviously deep dive into into them and I you know if if they were doing something really nefarious really deep I wouldn't know but at least on their website you get the information you get uh, you get what they are trying to achieve why they are doing it. And I look at their stuff and I say, okay, yeah, I get it. It's it's for me still a bit expensive, but in terms of our current smartphone market, 450 euros is not that much uh, for what you are getting. If uh, let me see, uh, let me see. Okay, Snapdragon 632 with four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of uh, of storage, uh, NFC, 4G, obviously, uh, and it's repairable. Probably more than the Librem. I can't tell because I've never had either, and I never tried to fix either of them. But like, there is. I I I don't believe for a second that uh, uh, they that Librem are doing the best they could with the circumstances they have. And I don't believe for a second that whatever they are saying is justifiable. Like that, the whole ethos of we are also pure and also cute, also cool and also ethical. No, you're not. You are just really selling overpriced old gear, right? And that's 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 my beef of it. And talking themselves up as if they were the holiest of holies. My my slight counterpoint, my slight devil devil's advocate, just as you're speaking there, as as you're comparing it to the Fairphone, is that the Fairphone is is um off the shelf components, um prob- probably because it runs Android, probably is has a lot of functionality from the from the operating system or the fact that Android um. It, you know runs in virtual machines so it, it largely the hardware doesn't really matter that much um and also fairphone never, don't say we're trying to open source the hardware as much as as possible so i'm willing to to give 
uh, Libram a small bit of slack in regards to that. They probably had to um, go off and, and research and say, okay, what is the most open uh, components that we can fit into this phone? Or um, uh, if we can't open source, if it's not open source by default, can we speak to the the company and see and try and persuade them to open source it or or something like that? So they probably had to pick and choose their components, which probably drove up the cost, not to the fucking degree that they're charging the the the, the phone for. So I'm giving willing to give them a bit of slack, not the the level of slack that they're asking for. Yeah, um, and. This is before we call before we get to the cherry on the cake, oh, right? Fuck. Which, like, uh, you know, it's, it's completely and utterly fucking unjustifiable. It's just I couldn't wait for this one. Is well, not, there um, almost fail me basically at this? Like. Uh, I'm just going to have to state it so we. I love it. It's people, the best phone ever. People, <laughs> people know the, what we're talking about is the Librem 5 USA edition of the grand co- total of 2000 fucking dollars. Um, uh, there's no there's no way in fucking hell they can justify that price. Let's okay, I, I I'm willing to again like my previous point, I'm willing to give them a hypothetical some slack here. Let's just say the the phone that's built in China is uh, now $750. And they're they're saying they're assembling the, this. Um, it's the same components, but they're assembling it in the states. Uh, states the United States probably has uh, will the labor would be more because um, the individual people are being paid more. Uh, but putting ethics of of that aside, there are inherent um, more costs to man, to manufacture or assembly in the, in the United States. So. Seven hundred fifty dollars for the Chinese phone. Let's say that increases, and I'm being generous here to twelve hundred or thirteen hundred. How the fuck did they get to two thousand? Well, hold on, hold on, Connor. You have to account for the three characters U and S and A. You know, they obviously believe in the. Founding fathers' liberal ideas, or which is more likely, they picked up on the current wave of jingoistic nationalism and uh, overreaching for casualty of everybody, and said, "Oh, look, people, people vote for Trump, so maybe if we call it USA, somebody will pay two grand for this." I mean, this is outrageous on so many levels. Is the same piece of crap phone that that f- is not? Is, and is, I don't is think it, I is actually, assembled in the states. I yeah. don't think the original one is assembled. I don't know where the original, where the seven fifty dollars one is assembled. I don't know if it's China or, it, or uh, you almost guaranteed it's China. It's the British. Well, it could be. It could every, be Taiwan. Every, you know, it could be Taiwan. Well, oh yeah, it could be yeah, Singapore. Okay, yeah, I actually yeah. looked up. Uh, they are using annex. Uh, they are using. Uh, they are using what is it called? Annex P, the company. Uh, they are using. Um, hmm, 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 one second. Uh, NXP, yeah, uh, components, and I think NXP have got uh, uh, have got uh, factories everywhere. I don't know, maybe okay, whatever, whatever. Maybe the seven hundred and fifty dollar thing is assembled in China. So, you for are... for the, uh, I'm willing to gra- uh, grant yeah. you some Asian cheap labor market uh, ethics of that aside, but yes. So, so for the bargain price of twelve hundred and fifty extra dollars, you can get yourself a, a a phone that is built in the United States, where the U.S. government, of course, never would spy on anybody. They don't have access to 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 any uh, you know they 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 would never even think about doing anything nefarious with people's devices. So yeah, that's a big win for anybody. I mean, actually, you know what? If if somebody is daft enough to cough up two grand for this phone, then they deserve to pay that much. And they deserve everything they are they are getting in that phone, which arguably is not much. The thing with the Librem is that I think they rode on the fact that it was a Linux phone a little bit too much. And I think, you know, maybe they didn't have the same, I, I think it's pro- probably an obvious thing to say, but they didn't have the same kind of love for the community and the kind of the the actual reasons that we are all in the community and everybody else is that we kind of 
chat to. Like, they weren't in it for the same reasons as us. They just saw it, it was more like a gap in the market kind of thing. And, or maybe, you know, as you said, they're just up their own arse. I don't know. So, you know, you're not part of the open community. You're not part of the FOSS world. You're just a fucking edgelord. Like, like you're not actually, yeah, like, based on everything I've seen, it's like you've not actually contributed anything, really. Well, I, mean, I I think it's okay. So they, they made a decision to make their own operating system for the phone, uh, which uh, questionable as they as it is, uh, they probably, I assume, I don't know, I assume that they contributed whatever code they made uh, upstream because whatever they made is open source, right? So I, I, I assume... I would prefer, though, I would prefer a contrib- contribution be made in the right spirit. I would prefer that a company doesn't doesn't contribute to the wider you know ecosystem or whatever you want to call it i would prefer they do that in the right spirit and if they're not going to do that then just don't do it at all like well it it is open source i mean um uh, the chief rival to this which is um in in my point of view um a much better approach to it which is the, the pine phone but this discussion is about the Librem 5 so I, I won't dwell on that too much but the the only reason i bring it up is because um post market os which is um has been ported over to the pine phone and it has plasma mobile um as a front end also uh i think i've seen versions of the uh the custom um, phone version of GNOME that that Librem have been running on is it Fosh OS or something like that? But whatever their custom GUI, which is open source, um, I believe some of the po- uh, post market OS uh developers have got that uh, that GUI or desktop environment running on post market OS so that it can run on the the Pine phone. So it is open source. They anybody can just take it and run with it. Yeah, but but just open sourcing it for me is quite enough it, it, it's more around their behavior and and uh like a lot of the things you guys have already talked about yeah i, I don't it just is it's like you don't you, you want to see kind of a seat at the table you want to be loved by the community for doing this great thing for everybody but then if you're gonna they're they're doing they're going up their approach is all wrong they're pissing off the yeah community you, exactly if you're time. gonna just to, do some dickish things and do some kind of, you know, you, you're going to do so. I'm, I'm not, I'm not say I'm not going to say outright dishonest. I'm going to stop short of saying that because I don't know. I think it's a, it's a big accusation, but, um, and I don't know enough about what's going on internally in that company to say that myself, I wouldn't feel comfortable, but, um, it's, it's misguided for sure. Um, my guess is that the uh they started off with good intentions, and they several snags have happened along the way. And rather than opening up to it and being dishonest, they probably either internally they got advice or an uh, uh an outsourced PR firm or or legal or something like that decided to uh or um inform them or advise them to keep it all internal and be all brave face and, and everything and then they they just have kept going down that road where it's brave face everything's fine everything's fine everything's fine we've hit some snags but everything's fine sorry about that we but everything's fine rather than being completely open and transparent and I'm I, I mean snags happen I mean you're you are um introducing a brand new device so setbacks do happen um and if you're open and honest about that um i believe the the community would have been a lot more forgiving than they are they are currently um it's just the approach is completely completely not really well wrong. if um yeah i think you know if you but then they are only hurting themselves you know if they let the community in the community would have helped them create a better product for less money i mean come on they could have just utilized the operating systems that are already there and i say i I know i'm not a mobile phone designer so i don't but uh, i'm pretty sure like i in my head there is no way if they if 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 you have to make the decision do i make myself in my small business do i design something by myself or do i invite those far and wide open source community to 
create something with me I just you know in terms of cost effectivity in terms of better product there is no way how the old the, the letter could could not could fail to be better right like, like there is what did I just say anyway there is no way how how uh, how it could uh, how how inviting the com- open source community uh, to to help them work with their product uh, would be and it it couldn't be it couldn't be it 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 has to be better than what they did they basically said everybody wait we are working on the mounting we are making the commandments we are sitting around the bush we are around the fire in the bush and when we come when we come home when we come down to you you're gonna bow to us and spend two thousand dollars on our shitty phone so uh yeah oh, oh, oh. Well, okay. Well, um, for the sake of this argument, we'll we'll, we'll just say that the seven hundred and fifty one, the two thousand one, is so ridiculous that it's not even worth considering. Yeah. But, right, um, well, uh, okay. On on on. Oh uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, on that point, um, I. This is in relation to the words that this person said. I'm not going to mention their name. Um, this. Um, anyone would be able to to look up this person quite easily, and uh, I'm sure anyone who's been following this story um, closely will know to whom we're, we're referring to. The uh, current or former, um, it's not sure, not clear if he's left or not, um, but knowing him, he probably has. Um, PR officer for uh, Librem or community, it was PR or community manager, I forget. His official response to valid criticism of the 2000 uh, offer or 2000 phone was, hey, it's not for you. Don't buy it. <laughs> well, <laughs> for a yeah, PR okay. person to say that is just s- screams of arrogance. So it's either wholly down to that one individual person or that is the internal culture that... that um, that that he he was just uh reproducing um in um the internal attitude um either way it's not a great attitude to have so i think we've uh, we've sufficiently um sufficiently given them the the cat o nine tails today so uh, <laughs> yeah. they've, they've 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 had they've had the cane from the linux lads today i tell you uh fundamentally i'll i'll end on this and this um I, i'm not just to let you know that i'm not going after after them for just for the sake of going after them the reason why i'm being so passionate is because i want a phone like this to succeed so it, they gave me so much hope they gave me so much promise when they they um they uh when they first came out and when they first announced it and the reason why I'm being so passionate about criticising them is because how much they disappointed me so I have a shout out for it that I'd like to mention uh, it's something that I had heard on other podcasts but then I came across on Twitter as well um, so there's a unofficial Office 365 snap for all of you who like to uh, snap install things um, and the it comes from uh, Hayden Barnes so um, fair play to you Hayden um, yeah uh, Microsoft have been long rumoured that they're, they're going to be coming out with an official Office 365 um, port um, for Linux it most likely will be an Electron wrapper in fact when they came out with the Microsoft Teams for Linux they said that this is going to be the first office app for for linux Ooh, wonder wonder what that would mean all teasing and mysterious but um fair play to hayden um he just says listen this is this is technology that i'm familiar with i know how to wrap things in electron and office 365 have a web ui so uh, and it's very easy to just take a website and wrap it in in uh, electron so that's what he did and he made a snap of it so um check it out uh, the unofficial Office three C five snap. Nice, I, I I I like this. I like this. I know it's Office three six five, but 
yeah, it's always good news. I, I like I like the warm embrace of Microsoft. <laughs> it makes me feel safe. I'm to- I'm absolutely fucking joking. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm cautiously optimistic about it, but we'll say we'll say that much. Um, so socials, as usual, we're on linuxlads.com forward slash telegram forward slash twitter or at linux lads on twitter probably easier to remember mastodon uh link in the show notes we do forward slash mastodon i forget that every week um and i didn't this week uh show at linux uh, if you want to email us please email us because nobody ever emails us or emails us so yeah do that please um and then linux forward slash support is it support or donate or do, do both work I think they'll both work. Uh, I think I did a few links there. A little, you know, anyway, so. um, the the long and the short of it is, go to linuxlads.com and all of the things will be up on the header bar, and you just click and whatever you want to whatever you want to go to. It's yes, a, it's, please, yes, please give us money. It's support dash us or, uh, yeah, support dash us. I can I can do uh, donate by the time by the time. Uh, people are hearing to this there is going to be a slash donate as well if, if they want that's not a problem just just like magic yeah just like that <laughs> it actually now works yeah it works slash donate is fine you can cut all of this out i won't it sounded great oh, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so thank you for joining us once again this was a great show great chats going on we uh we said some good things we said some bad things but uh, we came out the better for it in, in the end. Any final thoughts? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most that is the most Linux lads thing I've ever heard in my life. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Thank you for joining us. Thanks as always for listening and for lasting almost two years at this point, guys. Ooh. Well, it's more like a year and a half. Come on. Sh- <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, what was it? it was a. Uh, it was August, summer 2018, so... Yeah, yeah it, was, it was either August or September 2018, yeah. I'm going to say two years. <laughs> because it's 2018, it's 2018 then, and it's 2020 now. So that's two fucking years, all right? Yeah. <laughs> that That's some so, solid maths right there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.